This is the book of Luke 21 verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Luke 21 verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars. And upon the earth the stress of nations were perplexity, and the seas were as Luke 21 verse 26, A man's heart falleth them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Luke 21 verse 27, And then shall they see the Son of Man, which is the heavenly Father's only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Abishai, coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Luke 21 and verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, and then look up and lift up your head for your redemption draw off nine. And this is a uh, Matthew 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must first come to pass, but the end is not yet. Matthew 24 and verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. Matthew 24, verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Matthew 24, verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Matthew 24, verse 10, and then shall many be offended, and they shall betray one another, and they shall hate one another. Matthew 24 and verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24 verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall rise cold. Shalom. And this is the book of Psalms 96 and verse 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord Yahweh made it, made it, made the heavens. Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor to, to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Karkadash. Shalom to the uh, elders, Wa'akim, Wa'akwaf, and I say Shalom. And this is a uh, oh, uh, Shalom to the uh, elders, Wa'akim, Wa'akwaf, once more. And the Heavenly Father, the true name is a Yahweh, which is the God of Israel, which is Yahweh of Israel, the true living power, which is Yahweh, that's his true name, and his only begotten son, Hamashiach Abishai, who you call Jesus Christ, which is Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach Abishai. Uh, that's all their true names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the Lash one Kadash, the whole tongue. And Shalom to the uh, elders, Wa'akim, Wa'akwaf. And I say Shalom. And uh, I was looking at this uh, <laughs> video clip from a uh, world star hip hop. She might be an Israelite, and her name is, uh, I believe her name is uh, Krishan. Her name is Krishan Rock, and she was saying that uh, praying to praying to a uh, God of Allah is pointless if you don't if you don't receive Jesus, which is Yahweh Shai. That's his true name. Uh, Krishan Rock claims the war in Gaza is due to the Palestinians and not believing in Hamashiach Abishai, really because they worship the rock, which is uh, when you uh, Allah, because Allah means power. You know, that's all it, it just really means. You know, it really just, that's the only name that it has for it. Because those Arabs, which are the Ishmaelites, you know, Abraham's son, you know, because it says in the book of Genesis, it said Ishmael shall be as a he chose one oh, I went back off again. Yeah, he'll do that because they ain't cold. Right. Cold just cold next week. Show sure this. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> True.
Take that shit home and put it back and put it in the yard. I'm going to run and pick it up and put it at the door. Right. You ain't got to help us go and look for that shit. Yeah, right. That shit, dude. So as I read it again, uh, the book of Psalms 96 and verse 5, for, all, for, for the gods of the nations are idols, right? Because those are the Ishmaelites. They worship the rock. And, you know, they pray uh, five times uh, praying up to God, Allah, which is uh, power. That's all it, the meaning of it, you know. So those uh, Ishmaelites were all the Arabs because the Arabs, they are a mixed multitude. So they worship the rock. Which is uh, Me the uh, Kaaba stone over there in Mecca, which is those the Ishmaelites, you know. So, you know, their religion and belief system is kind of different. Who would say somebody that's a Christian, you know, or they're Christian? Like, you know, the reason why because of that, because she made that statement of a uh, Christian rock, and she's a she's a Israelite herself, and she probably don't she probably know that she's an Israelite. But, you know, she was saying from this uh, video clip right here, I believe it's like 59 seconds. And she said again, it says praying to uh, God of Allah is pointless if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't receive Jesus, which is Jesus. That's his true name. I mean, Jesus true name is which is uh, Yahweh, Yah uh, Yahweh Shah. You call uh, Jesus Christ What's his true name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew is uh, Yahweh Shah. You know, uh, Baha Shem in the name of Mashiach Al Shai. That's who you all call Jesus Christ, which the war called Jesus Christ. That's his uh, true name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, which is uh, Yahweh Shai. And the Heavenly Father's true name is uh, Yahweh. As I read it again, Psalms 96 and verse 5 For all the gods of the nations are idols. Right? So all the other gods of the nations are idols. You know, it's meaningless. It has no meaning to it. Because the Heavenly Father, he's the uh, true living power, which is Yahweh of Israel. And, of course, you're going to have other nations believe in what they believe in. But the true living power is uh, Abraham of Isaac and Jacob. Because the true living power, which is uh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, you know, the true creator, you know. So I'm going to read again uh, uh, Psalms 96 and verse 5. For, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord Yahweh made the heavens. So I'm going to uh, play this little video clip from uh, Krishan Rock. They don't believe in Jesus. So that's why it's happening right there. Like all them people that bowing down with them carpets that's on the floor, they bowing down to a God that said to work Worship his son to accept his son first. So, and then they making big palaces of it, like you know, like 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 they really standing and sticking behind it. Like they made laws about their religion. So, I'm kind of like where Jesus was born at. They over there believe in something that's totally have nothing to do with him, right? Or yeah. no? Because like I seen videos where they pray at is cockroaches and infested with. Like so, what is God trying to tell us? That's what I. That's what I want to know from this whole situation. Like, what is what is the message behind the chaos? Like, yeah, we know war to war, but it's like, okay, things always happen for a reason, and it's happening. What is the reason behind it? Not the. The reason why the Heavenly Father is showing us a message. Hey, you can read that in the book of uh, Matthew twenty-four, verse six, and through verse seven. Luke 21 verse 25 Mark the 13th chapter Matthews the book of Joel which I'm about to bring out and as she was stating that question she was like what is the Heavenly Father uh, showing us what God is showing us you know and she wanted to know why she's kind of curious about that and for one she's an Israelite she needs to know that she's an Israelite you know that's why the book of Daniel 12 verse 4 says knowledge should be increased and then the Heavenly Father says, I believe it's in the book of Leviticus that you are not supposed to have no, uh, any markings of your body. And the cross, and the cross that she was wearing, the chain that she had, that's the uh, cross of Talmud, you know. So keep that in mind as well, too. So 
Krishana Rock. She's an Israelite, you know. Little does she know that she's an Israelite. She's the daughter of Zion. Keep that in mind as well, too. So what she was saying was what's taking place with the uh, Hamas and, uh, you know, Hamas and uh, Palestine, Palestine versus uh, uh, the Israeli Defense Force. And she was asking, like, what is God is showing us? Well, he's really showing us the signs of the times, you know, and I'm going to read it and explain it. And this is uh, bringing out an exp explanation and explaining what the scriptures. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled for all these things must first come to pass. But the end is not yet. Right? Because we're seeing the wars and rumors of wars in the world today. Especially with the uh, situation taking place over there in Western Asia. You know, the Gaza Strip, the Palestinian territory, the West Bank. Uh, what's taking place over there in the Red Sea and throughout the whole region of uh, Western Asia. Matthew 24, verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation. Right, which, that's what we are seeing. The uh, Israeli Defense Force going against the uh, Palestinians and Hamas and the uh, pro-Iranian groups over there as well too throughout the whole region of uh, Western Asia and over there in the Red Sea. And we're seeing the uh, escalations and commotions are heating up between the different nations and different kingdoms, just like it says in Luke 21, verse 9. Matthew 24, verse 7, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Why you got one nation within itself rising up against a nation and one nation outside of their nation rising up against another nation of armies and one kingdom rising up a kingdom within itself against another kingdom of armies rising up against another kingdom of armies out within out of that self, you know. And there be famines and pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. Right, that's why as uh says in second edge the ninth chapter, because the Abbey Father's gonna visit this earth now so more than ever. And we're measuring the time diligently in itself. And it also stated in uh second edge the ninth chapter that we was gonna uh the Heavenly Father spoke of these signs from the days of before the even from the beginning. And just like Jeremiah 28, the prophets of old prophesied against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and a pestilence. Just like the prophets on the scene today, which is the Israelites, because it says in Amos 3 and verse 7, surely the Heavenly Father will, uh, he will do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, which is the Israelites. And Koshan the Rock, and Koshan the Rock, she made that statement. Why is God showing us these signs? What is God telling us? It actually tell us in the scriptures And she can read for herself You know But little do she know She's an Israelite You know She mostly from the tribe of Judah Or of the southern kingdom You know But in the meantime We'll bring up that uh, Matthew 24 and verse 8 All these are the beginning of sorrows Right These beginning of These increasing signs of the times of, In these modern day times you know, just like it says in Second Edges 16 and verse 8, the beginning of uh, sorrows, the beginning of wars, the beginning of evils, you know. What's I'm going to bring that out and clarify that. It says these are the signs that the Heavenly Father is showing us. As she uh, stated that question. Uh, second Edges 16 and verse 18, it says the beginning of sorrows, the beginning of mornings, the beginning of famines and great death. The beginning of wars, the beginning of, uh, and the powers shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these things shall come? It says, Behold, famine and plague and tribulation, our angers are sent as scores for the amendment. For all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be also always mindful of the scourges bring out the book of Joel. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring out the book of Luke uh, once more. As I brought out before I uh, started the lesson. And this is uh, Luke 21 verse 24. It says, And then they shall fall by the edge of the sword, because the modern day sword is the weapon and the instrument, and shall be led away captive unto all nations, right? The Israelites, because Jerusalem is a people before us in place. So, Krishan Rock, little does she know, she's an Israelite, and she's from the uh, tribe, uh, from either from the tribe of Judah, Judah, Benjamin, or Levi of the southern kingdom, and little does she know, she's an Israelite, and she's the daughter of Zion, and she definitely needs to understand that, you know. 
Luke 21 and verse 25, and she uh, asked that question. She was like, what is the signs that's God showing us? And these are the signs that the God showing us and through the scriptures as I'm reading right now, you know. Luke 21 and verse 24, it says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall lead away cap captives unto all nations in Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is a people before us, a place and shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, which is the other nations battling over a land that doesn't belong to them, you know, especially over there in uh, Israel and the Gaza script, you know, as a prime example. It says, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, right, the Gentiles are the other nations. That's what we see in wars are heating up over there in the area. Because the Heavenly Father is doing this for his people. He's pleading with these other nations, just like it says in uh, Joel, the third chapter. This is uh, Luke 21, verse 25. It says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations. Right? That's what we're seeing. Upon the earth the stress of nations. And these are the signs of the Heavenly Father showing us. As she stated that question, she was like, What God is showing us? What signs that He's trying to tell us? What signs that He's trying to show us? And these are the signs that the Heavenly Father is telling you. Just like it says in Second Edges, the ninth chapter, you know, the Heavenly Father spoke of these signs from the days of before thee, even from the beginning. And as recorded in Second Edges, the ninth chapter, I'm going to bring that out as well, too. Luke 21, verse 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the suns and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth, the curse of nations with perplexity in the seas of rage war. Luke 21, and verse 26, a man's heart fell falling them for fear for looking after those things which are come on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken Luke 21 verse 27 and it says and then shall they see the son of man which is Hamashiach Habashiach uh, coming in a cloud with power and a great glory Luke 21 verse 28 it says, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head for your redemption draw to mine, right, for the children of Israel. Because the Heavenly Father is only going to say one third remnant of his uh, people. This is uh, Joel 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, I will bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Joel 3 and verse 2. And I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Right, that's what we see in the uh, Israel-Palestine situation heating up. Even though we've been seeing that for a very, uh, quite a while, you know, for a very long time. From generations on down until now, you know. So it's only going to heat up over there. That's why the Heavenly Father is gathering up all the nations over there for his people. You know, he's pleading for his people, for his heritage, it's Israel. Because we represent Israel. You know, especially, uh, you know, the Lord of the Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. The Israelites, you know. This is uh, Joel 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Right, because it says uh, Judah and Jerusalem were oppressed together. And it says in the book of Baruch, uh, yet this day we're still in the lands of our captivities, you know. Uh, Prophet Joel 3 and verse 2. And I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is Shehawashapat over there in Western Asia. And I will plead with them, there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Uh, Joel 3 and verse 3. And they have cast lot for my people, which is the children of Israel. And they have given them a boy for a harlot, and so they grew for wine that they might drink. Right, doing the translated slave trade, the sub Saharan slave trade. Joel 3 and verse 4. Yea, what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, uh, Hamanic nations? And all the coast of Palestine, which is the Philistines, will you render me a recompense? Because those Palestinians over there, those are not the actual, uh, those are not the actual Philistines, you know, because the Arabs, they are a mixed multitude. The, the Philistines, they've been pushed down to Sudan, so keep that in mind as well, too. It says, will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me uh, swiftly and speedily, it will turn your recompense upon your own head. This is uh, the prophet Joel 3 and verse 5. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried them into your temple, my goodly present things. Uh, Joel 3 and verse 6. 
and the children also of Judah, and the children of Jerusalem, had ye so unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from that border, right, the Israelites, because they've been removed from, from that border. So those uh, Amalekites over there, and those Ishmaelites, so they're basically battling over a land that doesn't belong to them. Because the ancient Israelites, they would say, uh, dark skin complex the people, from the lighter brown to the darker brown. Prophet Joel 3 and verse 6, uh, Joel 3 and verse 6, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem had ye so unto the Grecians, which is the Edomites, that you might remove them far from their border. Joel 3 and verse 7, Behold, I will raise them up out of place where you have sold them, and I will return your recompense upon your own head. Prophet Joel 3 and verse 8, And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, that they shall sell them to the Sabarians, to a people far off from the Lord Yahweh has spoken of. Joel 3 and verse 9, Proclaim ye this amongst the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty man, let all the men of war draw near, and let them come up. Uh, Joel 3 and verse 10, Eat your plowshares and the swords, and pull me hooks and the spears, and let the weak say I am strong. Prophet Joel 3 and verse 11, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about to cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord Yahweh. Uh, Joel 3 and verse 12, Let the heathen be awakening. And come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is Yahweh Shabbat. For there I will sit and judge all the heathen round about. The prophet Joel 3 and verse 13. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come ye get ye down, for the press is full, and the fats overflow. For their wickedness is great. Prophet Joel 3 and verse 14. Multitudes and multitudes in the uh, day Salaki. I'm read that again. Uh, prophet Joel 3 and verse 14. Multitudes and multitudes. In the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. And this is a uh, Genesis and about the story of Ishmael. That's Abraham's uh, son. Let's see. Yeah, this is a uh, Genesis 16 and verse 1. Now, say, now Sarah, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she made a handmaid, an Egyptian, who name is Hagar. Genesis 16, verse 2. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord Yahweh has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, I go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her and Abram. Hearken to the voice of Sarah. Verse 3. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. After Abram, he dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. And he gave uh, to her husband, Abram's, to be his wife. Verse 4. Genesis 16, verse 4. And he went unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she has conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Genesis 16 and verse 5. And Sarah said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she said that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord Yahweh judges between me and thee. Genesis 16 and verse 6. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is thy hand. Let's do to her as please thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord, Yahweh, find her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to shore. And he say, Hagar, Sarah's maid, once comest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord, Yahweh, say unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. Genesis 16, verse 10, And the angel of the Lord, Yahweh, say unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multiplied. Second edge of 16, I mean, Salaki. I meant to say, uh, re rephrase that, reiterate that. Genesis 16, verse 11, and it reads, 
It says, And the angel of the Lord Yahweh say unto her, Be Behold, thou wilt child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, which is the Ishmaelites. Because of the Lord Yahweh, heart heard thy affliction. Uh, Genesis 16 verse 10. I mean Genesis 16 verse 12. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. And, it, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Yep, that's Ishmael, which is the Arabs. They are a mixed multitude. Because we know the original Arabs, they are they were a dark-skinned, complected people. But due to generations and colonizations and battles and stuff like that, they have mingled with the other nations. Because a lot of those Arabs, they are a offspring of uh, Greek uh, Greek babies. So keep that in mind as well, too, as I read Genesis the uh, 16th chapter and explains that. So with that, hopefully this uh, sit-down lesson was uh, edifying of this of uh, Krishan Rock. She made that uh, statement about uh, praying to God of Allah is pointless if you don't receive Jesus, which is Yahweh Shah, that's his true name. Krishan Rock claims the war in Gaza is due to Palestinians not believing in Jesus. No, because they don't believe in Jesus. They believe in this, uh, the rock, you know. Just like it says in Psalms 96 and verse 5, all the gods of the other nations are idols. What's I'm about to bring out again? Because uh, Allah just means power. You know, that's all it means. Allah of God just means power. That's all it means. Because the Heavenly Father, true name is uh, Yahweh. You know, Yahweh of Israel. So God just means power. Allah just means power. That's all it means, you know. This is uh, Psalms bring out that Psalms once again. Because that shows you that the Heavenly Father, He's the only true living power, Yahweh of Israel. And all the all the gods of the nations are false, are false idols, as the Heavenly Father mentioned it. This is the book of Psalms 96 and verse 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord Yahweh made it the heavens. Right, so that shows the Heavenly Father, he's a, a true creator of everything, you know. So let her, let this play again. So that's what, that's what the reason why. So I'm going to let this play again, then uh, I'm going to close out. They don't believe in Jesus. So that's why it's happening right there. Like all them people that bowing down with them carpets that's on the floor, they bowing down to a God that said to work his son to accept his son first so and then they making big palaces of it like you know like 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 they really stand it and stick it behind it like they made laws about their religion so i'm kind of like where jesus was born at they go over there believing something that's totally had nothing to do with him right or yeah. no because like i've seen videos where they pray at is cockroaches and infested with like so, what is God trying to tell us? That's what I. That's what I want to know from this whole situation. Like, well, what is what is the message behind the chaos? Like, yeah, we know war to war, but it's like, okay, things always happen for a reason, and it's happening. What is the reason behind it? Not the. Hey, so with that, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor to to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, or Karkadash, and the Heavenly Father. True name is Yahweh. His own begotten son, Baha Shem, and the name of Hamashiach Avishai. Those are their true names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the Lashwan Kadash, the Holy Tongue. And the heaven, uh, and Shalom to the uh, elders of Akim Wa Akwaf. Until next time, I will say Shalom.